So over the course of the last 23 years, I circumnavigated the planet once, on foot. And then I stopped counting. Uh, on this process, I've been using 23 pair of walking boots. But I have to say, I didn't become an explorer. I was born an explorer, like everybody here in this room. Because as a child, we are born to explore. But I guess I've always been a big fan of my inner child. Why well, we've got these things coming on, here we are. So from there, I never stop exploring. Across the US, I walk around Australia on a 14,000 kilometers journey. I follow the Andes in South America all the way to Machu Picchu. And then I walk from Siberia to Australia on a three years journey. In this trip, um, I had this, for the first six months, I was in this cleaning process. I was like inside a wash machine. But one day, I just looked like another day, but that day I woke up and something happened. What was outside was actually inside me. That day, it's when nature and I became one. So during that trip across Mongolia, where big Mongolian men invade my camp every night when night falls, then comes China. China was full of surprise, put it that way. Um, things get a bit sour when I get to the western border, where the special forces find me there. I needed to flee the country. And then uh, comes uh, Lao. Lao was full on. I had the dengue fever for three days in a jungle alone. And a week later, well, drug trafficker, even my camp at night with automatic gun. So Thailand came like as a relief crew, <laughs> really, because it's helped me to appreciate human being again. In fact, when I reached South Thailand, I thought, oh my God, I'm alive. That was about it. I jumped in a cargo boat to just get in Australia, where I reached my destination, my little tree, down the south part. So these were my previous expedition. But I want to take you today in a northern part of Australia, where there is more wildlife than human being. This is a special place, because there is crocodiles everywhere. And every time you try to look through the high grass a bit more closely, you find deadly snakes. So today I want to help you drop you there. This is the Kimberley region. This is the most hostile place in this continent. So this is the plan. My idea was to survive for three months with no food. And it was really like the plan of the Aboriginal people were to live before, years and years ago. So I make my way all the way down and get to the Bungus Bungus National Park. But one day, I arrive there, one month prior departure. And through some different contact, I met this local object woman called Juju. I had the chance to go bush with her. And uh, when I explained to Juju where I was going to go, and she said to me, uh, oh, darling, no, not this year. It's not a good year this year. Come back next year. <laughs> so she explained it to me that this year was a drought year. 
And so what's happened in the bush, it's nature all back. I wait for the next raining season, so there would be not enough stable food out there for me to survive on. So I did a seven days walk, but she was right. So I decided to, to take with me on my journey a food source of 100 grams of flour per day. And this is look like this. That's all I've changed on my original plan. So the expedition started on the 6th of June 2015. I get dropped off with a helicopter and I started walking. On the second day, from this higher ground up there, I throw my full debit bucket in the water. I throw it back. But I didn't collect enough water. So I throw it again. I pull it back. When I'm about to pull it back, something was blocking it. I thought first, well, that's a branch, no worries, you know. But the branch was bringing me my, my bucket back really hard. And I was pulling that way, and I was pulling that way. In fact, I was fighting with a crocodile. <laughs> that was my first fight. That was the real beginning of this expedition. Can you see this little light out there? Right there. This is me. It's my camp. So, in order to be strong, I needed to understand my vulnerability. And as long as I've been thinking about doing this trip, it, it's been a long time, it was an old dream. But one day last year, I had this incredible feeling, and I thought, I could actually be ready for this dream of mine hiding in a corner. So I started training, studying about it, eating. And little did I know that this expedition would become the hardest expedition I have ever undertaken. So it's a little bit like, you know, when you look through a window, and you look outside, but you're inside a house. In, in order to experience the outside, you have to do that step outside of the house. And you need to go outside of your comfort zone. And in that little step, there is nobody to help you. It's between you and you. But one thing will help you, it's curiosity. Curiosity will help you to open your vision, to see further. It's how walking became my master. Over the years, I start to hear the melody of the earth. The more I walk, the more it becomes really clear that everything is linked. It's like in a big giant painting where everybody, small thing, big things have their place. And I start to feel my sense of belonging to this planet. I've crossed deserts, mountain, savanna plain, jungle, rivers. And I started to feel the belonging we've got with this planet. But I needed to understand that we are part of the mammals family. In order to survive, I needed to shut down my left brain and use the right one. Attrition, senses, feeling. And so I needed to get in touch with my animality a little bit. So, it's a process. So over the years, I can now smell the water from far away. I can actually gather my own food, find the right shelter. Yes, I began a bit wild. A little bit. 
But deep down, under all those layers we all have, I found this wild, beautiful animal. But let me bring you back to Australia. Out there, it's an all-you-can-eat country. But you need to find it first. So in the morning, I will eat kapok flour. And then, 10 hours later, even if I catch one or two fish, I still have to clean it, make a fire, cook it, eat it. And all that energy will not be replaced by one or two fish. At the beginning of my expedition, I will catch one fish. I was so happy about it. Oh, I had my first fish getting out of the water. And as soon as it gets just out of the water, guess what? The crocs get it. <laughs> so I needed to put some strategy on place, real strategy for real solution, you know. So I will have two different fishing spots. I will quietly run from one to the next one, and I will have just enough time in my hand to actually catch another fish and make sure that he landed safely next to my feet. So soon as he was safe, they would be there watching me, smiling at me. <laughs> they become my friend, my pet friend. So during this expedition, I pushed at my limit like never before. But I was OK. I was OK. But suddenly, down the, down the track, one night, for no reason, I would struggle. I would hit some boundaries within myself. But then over the years, I've learned I've learned those hard times don't last, to start with. And storm pass. Nothing really lasts. So that's what gives me the power to push through those hard, hard times. And that was the solution for me. Because people ask me, how you can actually walk for so many days, so many kilometers, well, I bet you, you and me, just one step at a time, really. But every step is important. So I had this trick for my mind. You know, but the body is something, but you've got the mind to deal with. So to trick my mind, I will have like a post-it on my forehead with my destination writing in it. Then I will trick my mind. This, 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 the destination is here. So I will avoid some question like, uh, actually, do we know where we're going? Or um, this one, I hate it. Are we there yet? <laughs> so now I know that many of you got one question in mind. Why? Why I put myself through this massive effort, pain, risk, solitude? Well, in reality, there is no proper answer to this question. Exploring is my way to search, to understand. Walking is my teacher. But the best way to put this is probably to tell you what surviving for three months has done to me. That's what I wrote in my tent. The truth is, surviving has ripped me apart, destroyed all my self-knowledge and all my certainties. Surviving has gutted me. Surviving has run like a ball through my soul and played with my body fat. Surviving has pushed me a little further and further again into a dark place. 
or sometimes in an incredible enlightening one. Either one of those places I wouldn't have visited normally. It's only out of those zones of extreme incomfort that the work is done, experiences learn, and it's all worth it. It has always fascinated me to carry 30 kilogram house on my back. It's fascinating to think that it's the reflection of how little we really need. Surviving in those extreme places, it's like buying a ticket to freedom. But the currency is sweat, hard work, dedication. It's a constant work. It's a humbling road where the respect for whole life form grows with the deep understanding of our invisible link to everything, everyone, everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. So I'm sure that people here are curious to learn how you deal with Mongolian mm. <laughs> men and drug dealers mm. coming into your camp. Yeah, that's a bit of a tricky one. But it's about it's, energy. Yes. So when you've got people coming towards your energy and into your zone of, of security, uh, you know they, they're up to no good, right? They're really up to no good. So you need to react in consequence. So I've got a big knife. <laughs> and I survived. In the 30 kilos, a big knife. Sarah, thank you very much. Thank you.